guys, I'm Bethany. And I'm Dalton. And welcome back to season 10. We're back. <laughs> Mostly I'm back. I'm here. Yeah, I know, but you've been here the whole time. Okay. Well, yeah, but I'm this was the last year was a test run. You're like, can this oh, guy can this guy enough, cut it? Fair enough. We have decided to end his probationary period and bring him on. I got a, a new contract. <laughs> we have renewed your contract last year for double the salary. Le- oh yes, yes, because double of nothing is still nothing. Oh man. So, guys, it's season ten, which in a way makes it seem like we've been doing this way longer than we have because you know there's two seasons in a year Mm -hmm. but at the same time (laughs) i can't believe like i can't believe that it's been four and a half years which i'm talking to you you're like "Uh uh-huh sure i know it's been so long (laughs) but we are excited to be back we've spent um we always record on monday so we spent last monday doing some planning we've done so much planning it was at least an hour and a half (laughs) (laughs) but we got all of our um topics for this season figured out we don't have them in order but we have them figured out and i know you said it to someone the other day like i think we're really excited we've got a good list yeah one of our topics is why i'm so great at this i think that's that's like a two and a half hour i don't remember seeing that one on the list are you sure pretty sure i'm pretty sure it's on the back on the (laughs) it's on the back of the list yeah (laughs) we'll make sure to get that one done ASAP. That's right. The people need to know. ASAP is possible, as uh, Michael Scott would say. No. <laughs> okay. Bad. Nothing. That's your that's your nothing? office office reference right there. That's my. Yeah. <laughs> I've used it up already. Mm-hmm. Well, fine. Okay. Quick couple of things to note. Um, if you are a female listener and would like to be able to interact with some fellow female listeners on Facebook, we do have a group for just such as that. It is. LFTM community on Facebook. Look for the group. We will get you in. It's several hundred women who just have fun chatting and asking questions and talking about things. And why are you looking at me like that? I'm tunnel vision. I'm making sure I'm focused. Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> Cut your blinders on. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, so we have that. We do have a newsletter that will come out on Thursdays after each episode on Wednesday. And I will just go ahead and say I didn't do the greatest job last season of getting that out because Kristen always did it before and I always would forget and I'm really sorry. So I'm determining to do better this season. You never asked me for input ever on the newsletter. Just saying. I did not. You are correct because if you go to our website and look at your bio section, (laughs) pretty sure it still says coming soon from when I did ask you about it. About a year ago at this point. That is a valid so, point. So I didn't want to overload you with newsletter when you can't even give we me will, a bio. We will do it right after we're done recording. Okay. So, Otherwise, it's not getting done. <laughs> so we'll, yes, we will do better with the newsletter. And then last thing, follow us on social media. Uh, Instagram is probably your best bet. I am ramping back up from the holidays, getting back on social media more. So LFTM underscore podcast on Instagram. Come hang out with us. Yeah. Those are my things. Now, I have the question of the day. Are you ready for this? I never am when you ask questions. I think this is a fun one. You weren't even prepared for it. I wasn't, but it's fun when I saw it. Okay, ready? I just asked you that. We're going to pretend ready? I didn't say it again. <laughs> That's like the third time you've asked me if I'm ready I know. in this recording. So, what is something about, quote unquote, being an adult that was really surprising to learn? Um... Okay, everyone talks about how expensive it is. Yeah. That was an understatement of the century. Mm. You're just, money doesn't exist. You know, that's a really good way of putting that. <laughs> I just, I used to think that my parents made a whole lot of money and yeah. they had a whole lot of money. Yeah. Because they had a house and a car. And I'm like, um, uh, there's no money in the world. <laughs> The people that where where did it all go? Do, and and I always thought you know I would have cash because I grew up in more of a cash era and like I physically tangibly yeah. see the money. I'm not actually sure my money exists, <laughs> especially oh, when really tax season comes around. Then there goes more of my money because yeah. I'm in ministry and taxes are very confusing. Um, it's surprising just how expensive everything is. Okay, and then. On That's the flip <laughs> side of that, how little of the thing that I need to pay for the expensive that I actually have. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really good way of putting that. How little of the thing you have to pay for the expensive. Uh-huh. Good. That's 
so eloquent of you. English teachers, if you're out there, I bet you just love that sentence. <laughs> we may have to put you back on probation for that one. No, 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 <laughs> no. no. I am. In, I have already been contracted. <laughs> that is true. Um, no I, takesies, backsies. Okay, I think for me, um, I don't know. As a kid, I just thought once you get to be an adult, at whatever point that was, it was a little arbitrary, but like you just knew how to be an adult. Like, no. you knew the stuff. You knew the things to do. You knew the decisions to make. You knew where the money, like, what to do. And, like, growing up, for whatever reason, whenever we would, like, play, like, we were grown-ups or play pretend or whatever, 26 was always the age that was like, oh, I'm 26 because I'm a grown-up. And, like, that just seemed like the pinnacle of adulthood. Um, so I remember when I passed 26, I kept waiting for, like, the wisdom to be imparted for, like, how to be an adult. And here we are 10 years past it. And I'm still like, I... Wonder if they forgot that I'm an adult. Like, am I supposed to? Did I miss a class somewhere? Who is they? I don't know. That's the thing. The the wisdom imparting body. Like, I don't know. Where does it come from? How do you know? I just thought I would know more than I do, and it's been very shocking because now I'm like, all these people who are older than me that I just assumed knew everything. They're probably still trying to figure it out too, and it's just weird. What is related to that is I thought I'd feel like yeah. an adult. You skipped that and went straight to grandpa. No, 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 no. Not, yes, I'm, not, I'm not talking about like physical pains. Oh, okay. Because the physical pains, I have been at grandpa stage for a very long time. <laughs> you just heard the disgusting noise of my knee popping. Yeah, that was... Ugh, and I just cool. shifted in the chair. That it was, was it. rough. No, like I thought mentally I'd feel like an adult. Yeah. When I hit a certain point, I'd go, mm-hmm. okay, I have matured. Yeah. I am an adult now. Everything is going to make sense. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm actually more confused in adulthood than I was in my childhood years and my teenage years i'm convinced because you know now like when drama stuff happens or someone's being annoying or what like i don't know about you but the thing we girls always say is oh my word we're not in high school anymore like we should be past this and here i am however many years past high school still saying that like oh my word we're not in high school anymore act right people i think high school is the the, the, the it, like forever you look back and say, oh my word, we're not in high school anymore. But no one ever acts any different than that. Now I'm like, I just want to be old. Yeah. And then it's you can a, just be mean and grumpy for no reason. No, I won't be mean and grumpy. I want to be a sweet old person. You better start working on that. We have we have a couple. I, I am a kind person. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I'm fantastic. We've um, talked about lying in church. It counts double. No, it doesn't. I'm, I'm telling you it does. No, there it's is somewhere. no <laughs> biblical mandate for that. <laughs> We have uh, this couple at our church that has been married for, I think, 50 years this year. Um, and they are the sweetest of ever. Of ever? Of the history of ever. I want to be like them. Aw. That's, that's really cute. That's my, that's the pinnacle of life is to be a sweet older oh. saint in the church okay. that's just like, hey, you need anything? And then you just get to hug people all the time. Aww. And no one ever looks and goes, why is this person hugging me? Because that's just what you do as an old person. Aww. I want to be that person. Okay. That's a, that's a good I gotta get through. I have to get through my fiery stage years of uh, <laughs> trying to prove myself in life. And yeah, I, I got to yeah. get through this stage and okay. then go into my 30s and go into my questioning stage and then go in my 40s and be in my li- midlife crisis and then go into my 50s. And I'm like... I've Did I just waste most of my life <laughs> and then go in my 60s and go, no, I think it'll be okay. And then in my 70s, and then I've really got things figured out. But I have to live to be 105 so that I can live in three centuries. So that's the bar that <laughs> we're at right say, now. If your 50s are going to be your, no, you said 40s were your midlife crisis. Uh-huh. Well, you have this really planned out. Yeah. No, no, but here's the thing you need to know about me. Every time I have something planned out, yeah. it never goes according to okay. plan. So now I'm planning terrible things oh, cool. so that it doesn't go according you know to plan. You know what you need to do? You just need to plan to be single for the rest of your life. Why have we not thought of this? Because it's really sad reality and but maybe that's the one time be- <laughs> maybe that's the one time that my that I will go according to plan and I'm like I did this to myself. <laughs> that's true. There might not be a win-win in that situation. Planning to fail is not this- a good approach. Okay. Cuz then it's just hopeless. Well, I if you just, plan I mean, to fail, then you're like, well, there really is no hope. And now I'm living a hopeless existence well, in terms of relationships. I mean, I have a very hopeful existence because, you know, Christian and whatnot. Y'all, I need to stop drinking coffee before we start recording. <laughs> it's going off the rails. <laughs> you started this. Quickly. Well, yeah, I just, I'm just, I'm still recovering a little from your decade plan through like your 
hundred and fifty year. G- give me some grace here, people. I'm just surprised. I am running on literal fumes right now. It has that, the no, two no. of us are running on literal <laughs> yes. fumes right now. We both kind of had long, interesting. My weekends. last off day was last Saturday. Oh, so like ten days ago. Uh huh. I'm sorry. I am running on okay. fumes. I'll let it go. So I'm I mentally so much more to say, unstable. You're winning the hardship you're, Olympics at the you're moment. You're running so I'll on stop. fumes as well. I am. I'm you're just more not as mentally much stable, but that's because you, you know you're in the 30s stage. So oh, I'm in the. I'm in my stable 30s. Yeah, you're in Got your it. stable, but yet confused okay. stage, and I'm in the fiery, can't shut up stage. Okay. Yeah. Got it. If you would just listen to the things that I say, you would understand life way more. <laughs> oh, is that how this? Is that is be? how this People, works. People, mark it down. If you would just listen to what Dalton says more. Then you I would be set. That, that, no, no, no. I didn't say life would be better. I'm pretty sure that's what you said. No, I said you would just understand things more. <laughs> understand the You awesomeness? would understand why it's not better in some areas. <laughs> oh, my word. Okay, we are reining it in, people. No, we're not. We are going to try. Um, that's not the last soapbox that I will be on. I hope you know that. I know. I know it's coming. The people don't. So let's leave them in suspense a little bit longer. We're in post-sermon so, mode. So <laughs> let's talk about... Now that we, you kind of set this up well, and I'm not sure if you did it on purpose or not, but you have this whole like plan for your whole life, every decade. I don't. That was completely ad-libbed. Well, yes, but let's go with it. We don't have to tell them that. I just did. (laughs) So like you have it all planned out and you have it all set. But like you said, we all know things don't go to plan. Things, you can make all the best plans in the world, but the Lord will direct your steps and it may not look like your plans. So in this more narrow context of a dating podcast, we are talking to people, ourselves included, who probably wanted to be married a long time ago, but they're not. They still find themselves single, and maybe they're single into a decade they weren't planning to be. So I think there can be a temptation to, well, I'm just going to put everything on hold until Mm. I'm married, or I'm just going to wait for that until there's someone in my life, or I'm going to whatever. But I've been in places like that before where I'm like, okay, I'm just in a holding pattern but I don't see any scriptural precedent for that being how I should live my life. So let's talk about what it looks like to live in a season of singleness, but not waste your singleness. Here's something interesting. Yesterday, yes, I went out to eat with, uh, well, several people from the church, but okay. Ben and Lindsay that we had on the show. Oh, yeah. Um, I was talking to Lindsay, and Lindsay said, Dalton, what's your five-year plan? I hate it when people ask me that. I'm like, uh, uh, I don't know. I will be living in 2028, and that's all I know. Well, I'm not even convinced of that. You never know with me. Um, Where are you going to go? The year 3000? I went to the year 3000. (laughs) Honestly, not much has changed, but they live underwater. Really? And your great, great, great granddaughter. (laughs) You're going to get committed to this, huh? Doing fine. Anyway, five-year plan. Um, I said, my five-year plan, I want to be a pastor. So for those of you that don't know, I am not technically a pastor. What are you doing with your glasses? Sorry. You're there doing weird glasses. You had blinders on. Um, I just wanted to see if they were really canceling the blue light on my screen. We are so far off right now. I am so sorry. Um, Five-year plan. I want to be a pastor because right now I am a director of family ministries, Mm -hmm. but not serving as an actual associate pastor or or elder. My goal is to be a pastor. Okay. So that's one of them. Uh, I also want to go visit several countries because I love missions. So I want to do that. The other thing is, I want to be married. Okay. So that was that was one of the goals that I said the next five years I would love to see happen. Yeah. What's interesting is the last one that I just mentioned. I mean, yeah. I can do things to work towards that, mm. but I don't really have much control over it. Yeah. So, what do I do? But do you, in a sense, have more control over the others? Really? A, a little bit. Okay. A little bit, because. Part of the reason why I'm not is because I hadn't been here for a year, which is constitutionally mm. a big deal. Gotcha. But there's other things as well. Um, but we're working towards okay. that. In terms of missions, I have a lot of control That's over true. that. That's true. Fair enough. I, I, it's just a matter of going and doing. But with marriage, I mean... You got to get her on board. Yeah, I know. That's I got to convince somebody. Yeah. And that's the hardest part is convincing them to actually, you know, yeah. be interested I'm telling in Telling you, um, <clears throat> arrange marriage. It's well, not that bad of an idea. I'm well, still well, waiting on you to find someone for we, me. We will talk about the art of the setup in a much okay, later, fine. later, okay. later episode. <laughs> um, anyway, as you keep distracting me, so I'm sorry. trying to get somewhere here, people. I'll clap. Working towards that. 
I don't have a ton of control over it. I mean, I can date someone and continue to put myself out there, but no, I'm only 50% of the equation. So do I just hold back on everything that I want to do in life until that moment? Or do I just keep moving forward and praying that the Lord would provide? Yeah. I personally think if you hold back in life and you say, well, I'm going to start doing all of these things once I'm married and have a more stable situation, you are doing yourself a disservice Mm. and you are wasting your singleness. Yeah. We're going to unpack all of that, but that was kind of a realization that I came to yesterday. Something I've been working through a lot recently is, am I wasting or using my singleness? When you look at what the Apostle Paul says, he's actually saying, I think it would be great if people were like me and in this season of singleness, because you can give your entire life to Christ. Some of you, that's not the case. But he recognizes that you are actually in a pretty unique situation as a single person. Mm -hmm. You're able to give a whole lot more of yourself to Jesus Christ and his church and his mission. Yeah. But there's so many people that hold back because they think once they hit marriage, then they've arrived and they can start living their life. Yeah. Well, and I think it's just kind of bringing in what you were saying with like Paul and what he said there about, you know, I wish that you were like me and all you can do for the kingdom. I think it kind of reveals when you look at that, and then you look at kind of putting your life on hold or not doing all these things, it kind of, I don't know, it kind of brings to the surface maybe a heart attitude that is maybe made an idol out of marriage. Because it, it, it's like, okay, what is the goal of life? We would all say, oh, it's to glorify God, to live life for him. to and enjoy him for forever. Yes, to make impact for the kingdom and to, to spread the gospel. Like that's what we're here for. But I think a lot of times we live like the purpose and the end goal is to get married. Mm-hmm. And then you can do those things. Mm-hmm. When in reality, there's not a, there's not like a condition or a caveat put on that. And so, at least for me, I kind of, like I had a mind shift a couple of years ago, kind of like, okay, what, what is your goal in living? What Like, you can say all the right things, but when you, rubber meets the road... What are you actually living for? Is it to find someone? Are you putting such an inordinate amount of time into that that you're neglecting maybe time in the word or you're not doing, you know, what you should from that standpoint? Um, Because like you said, you don't hold back, but you have to keep things in a proper hierarchy of priority. Like you can't spend all of your time on apps and going out on dates and doing all the things and let your spiritual life suffer. You still have to keep that balance there. Yeah, a lot of times we treat it as if if I only had X, then I would go and do this. Yeah. We make faithfulness conditional. I was going to say conditional obedience, but yeah. So if if I'm married, then I'll start going and doing those things. And there is just no category in Scripture for that. Yeah. Now, it talks about the importance of finding someone to marry and, and being joined together in one flesh. That's all great. It's all biblical. It's all important. But in no scenario does it say you can punt on life yeah. until you get married. Yeah. You go on your thought and then I'll come well, back I to what say, I was I about to say. I know for me, one thing I kind of had to, and I don't, this may be different from a guy's perspective. I don't know if the mindset is different a little bit of a lot of like getting out there and being involved and like, especially in your church and like what they're, what they're doing and going and building community is you have to get past, okay, I'm going as a single person. And the mentality, like your singleness isn't as glaring to most other people as it is to you. Like I would go to things and do things and try to, you know, reach out to people and do different things. And I felt like it was this huge neon sign saying, oh, I'm the single one. All the couples were doing the thing. Like I'm the one that's single. But I don't think that's not what, that's not a primary filter that a lot of other people have. And so I think you have to push past that fear of man and what are people going to think? And, oh, well, everyone else that's going on this project or this you know, service opportunity, they're all married. So I don't know if I should go, but I think you have to push past that. I'm just going to shoot that one down straight up because you're not, especially when you're serving in the church, you are not going as a single person. You're going as a faithful Christian. Exactly. That your identity is not wrapped up in exactly. your relationship status. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I, mentally, you have to married people. That. Your identity is not wrapped up in the title of being married or yeah. husband or wife. Yeah. Your identity is wrapped up in Christ. Yeah. 
So when we're all gathering together as a church to do things together or to serve together, our identity is wrapped up in Christ. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. So it's important to recognize that and encourage yourself on that. But that's not really the nature of this conversation. That's just a little side trail that we like to follow. (laughs) One of the most impactful sermons that I've ever listened to, probably I would say the, the most impactful sermon I've ever listened to, John Piper's Don't Waste Your Life. So in that one, he's more calling Christians to live completely sold out for Christ, to live for his glory. A lot of it is more related to missional living. He gives he gives an example, talks about uh, towards the beginning of it, how he got a, uh, a copy of either the New York Times or Reader's Digest. Uh-huh. I don't remember which one it was. Um, and it, it had this long story about a retired couple that had moved to maybe Naples, Florida, okay. into a retirement community <laughs> and had this really nice sailboat <laughs> and were collecting seashells yeah. and were they were loving retirement. <laughs> and then he said, let's compare it to some ladies, and he, he gave their names, I don't remember what their names were, yeah. who went to Central Africa in their 70s and started serving as missionaries there, yeah. ended up getting murdered wow. because of their faith. Which one of those two things is the tragedy? Yeah. And he said, my contention is the death of the two in Africa is glorious. And the retirement of wasting the rest of your life is the real tragedy. Yeah. I say all of that to say his encouragement was don't be living for this in terms of I am going to. And this is why I push back on people. I don't like the American dream. Yes. I'm just not a fan of it because it's all Mm -hmm. about self. Property, wealth, happiness. Mm -hmm. Live the American dream to get to this point, and then you will have arrived. You deserve it. That's not the Christian life. Yeah, a lot of Christians live for retirement. Well, I'm going to focus in my younger years when I have a a family and everything on just making sure we get through and we set ourselves up for retirement, and then once I'm retired, I can give myself more to the the church. Yeah, that is a load of crap. Tell us how you really That is a feel. load of crap. <laughs> I'm not even a huge fan of retirement. Yeah. In, in the sense of everyone else of where you just go sit in a retirement community and you play golf constantly and that's yeah. all you do. Yeah. I'm fine with you retiring from your career if you go and do something else. But sure. that's a that's, side note again, that I don't need to yeah, go we down. we don't need to go down that rabbit trail. But it's living for when yeah. I just get to this point, then I can do what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. In J.C. Ryle's book, Thoughts for Young Men, he talks about constantly... Uh, his encouragement to young men is don't waste your youth. Don't just say, I will deal with X tomorrow. Yeah. Because he even says, tomorrow is the devil's day. Today is the Lord's. Yeah. The devil is okay for us living tomorrow because when tomorrow arrives, we'll just say, do it tomorrow. Yeah. And that's the thing for single people. Don't waste your singleness. Mm -hmm. Don't say, I'll start doing X and Y and Z when I'm married. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a load of crap. That's going to be our catchphrase today. Load of crap. Got it. Just write that down. You okay. can use it later. That's not biblical. No. You need to get out there and be faithful now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think, well, first of all, you just referenced several things there. Mm-hmm. Um, so since you're so looking forward to helping with the newsletter, if you could get me the links to the books and the sermons and the things, that would be great. Okay, now I have to I remember really everything that I said. That. So we'll, we'll write it down right okay. now. Mm-hmm. The book. We, we, we got all of it. Carry on. Okay. Um, now I've lost my We were on the concept of not wasting your life and pushing things to tomorrow. Yes. You can't, I think... There is a pride in presuming that there will be a tomorrow. Mm, yes. Um, you're, you're presuming upon God that, you know, you will have a tomorrow. You will, I will do this. I will be obedient tomorrow. Um, and that's a dangerous place to, <laughs> to be living, I think. Um, Cause I think at the core, that's what that is, is I know what I should be. I know what I should do. But it's easier to not. And so I will just hope that there's another day that the Lord gives me to do that. Um, And I'm preaching to myself here just as much as anyone else. Uh, Because it is easy when you are single and you're the only person you have to answer to, especially if, you know, you're graduated from college, you're out in the career world, you're out out from under like your parents' home, 
you go, maybe, maybe you have roommates, maybe you don't, but your roommates aren't any sort of authority figure in your life. You know, there's no real, no, absolutely not. <laughs> you have, you have roommates, mm-hmm. you know, there's no real authority over how you spend your time, how you spend your money, which you thought you would have way more of somehow. Um, I don't. <laughs> Or what you go and do. And so it's just up to you. And I think it's easier to say when there's someone else to do this with, then I'll do these things. But I don't know. There's, I think that's a one thing that I have taken from being single. I was going to say from being single for so long, which just sounds awful, but it's the truth of the matter. <laughs> is as a single person, especially the, the older you get and the more established and just routine and living an independent life you, you are, there is extreme value in the self-discipline it requires to make yourself do hard things now. Hmm. And if you've been listening for a while, I don't know if we've talked about this before even, but if you've been listening for a while, y'all will remember a couple years ago, maybe even three years ago now, when I decided that I took up running and I ran for a long time because I just I was really convicted about how much I just did what I wanted to do and what was easy for me and I didn't have to answer to anyone else. I could mm. come and go. And I just was like, you know, there just like I was saying, there's, there's, there's a lot of value in the discipline to make yourself do things you don't really want to do. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, okay, well, what's something that I really don't like doing? And I hate running. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, there's my thing. And so for months I got up, went to the gym and made myself run. I mean, not very far at first, but worked up to, I mean, I was running several miles at a time then. Um, and so just the mental self-discipline of doing that was actually really valuable for things much bigger than just, okay, I'm going to go to the gym and work out, mm-hmm. you know? And just, I think as single people, it's especially in Western society where the American dream is prevalent and you do whatever makes you feel good and, you know, you get the best for you. It's a very me, me, me focused society. We just do the easy things. We just do what's convenient for us. We do self-care and the me time and all the stuff, which, yeah, don't run yourself into the ground, but it's very self-focused. And so I think we've got to get outside of that Mm -hmm. and, and do hard things. Put yourself out there. Um, living a life for the kingdom and, you know, spreading the gospel is not, was never promised to be easy. No. At all. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was promised that it would be the opposite. Quite hard. <laughs> so there's a lot, a lot of minds. I don't know. There's a lot of like having to retrain your brain so much of what, even, even if you're in a great solid church and you hear good preaching and you hear the truth regularly, we are absolutely bombarded mm. by the world's way of thinking, which to single people is you do whatever you want to do. You make sure you find someone who will fit into your life and your plans and your way of doing things. And that's just setting you up for failure, both in your singleness and in marriage. May I get on a soapbox? I thought you were just on one. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. You may. Okay, because it's related to... <laughs> Something you said kind of in the middle yeah. of your, your little tangent there. Um, <laughs> My little tangent? It was a small tangent. It wasn't a big tangent. It was related? No, it, it very much was. Okay. But the, the, <laughs> we're, we're about to spear off first. Okay. Though, because you were talking about how um, you're, you're living as if you're even guaranteed another mm. day. Yeah. I think what can happen in singleness is you can create this mindset inside of yourself and there's no no real reason for it and no real precedent for it that you're owed mm-hmm. marriage. Yes. And so you live, I think in big part, the reason why so many people waste their singleness and, and just look to the future and say, once I'm married, then I'll do this. You're assuming a lot of things that you don't know. Mm. And you're also assuming that you are owed the right to be married. Yeah. I'm about to sound really harsh. No, we've and said it before. And it's related to my sermon yesterday. So okay. a little bit of it just comes flying out of that. We'll link it in the newsletter. We will link it in the newsletter, <laughs> even though it's not technically linked because the the sermon hasn't come out on sermon audio yet. But by it will, but by the time out, it comes out, just, anyway. Um, we will put my sermon in there, and I'm not plugging. You got to be careful about that because I, I don't like plugging I my said stuff. It. I, yes. Yeah. No. No. I well, know. Let's just make sure that's yeah. No. No. That's, that's clear. Fully my idea. <laughs> um, you have, you the single person have no claim or right mm. to being 
married. Yeah. So I was preaching through uh, the end of Job chapter 1, which, for quick context, quick. Job has everything. Job loses everything. Yeah. But the response was incredibly instructive for me, and I think it is incredibly instructive for everyone, because Job, instead of coming to the place that he was where he lost his 10 children and his thousand of livestock and all of his servants, he does not complain against the the sufficiency and the incredible nature of his God. He does not say, why have you allowed me to go through this? Or why have you taken this away? Or why have you withheld this from me? And a lot of times in singleness, you start to live for, why has God not allowed me to find someone yet? Mm -hmm. Arrogantly thinking, he owes you anything. (laughs) When Job says it is the Lord that gives and is the Lord that takes away, he is recognizing that God is the creator of all things. That God is, as we'll later find out in the book of James, the giver of all good gifts. Therefore, we have to come to a conclusion that all things belong to him. And if all things belong to him, he has the only right to do with it whatever he will. will. So for you, single person, you have no claim or no hold to being married. Now, I know that that sounds harsh. I was going to say, it's a harsh truth, but... Harsh does not negate the truth of it. But it's the reality. Yeah. I mean, that is just the reality. I personally, though I want to be married, and though in my five-year plan that I had to list off, (laughs) I said I wanted to be married within five years. Yeah. But I have to come to grips with the fact that I have no real control over it. You have to hold it with a very open hand. I have no right to it. Yeah. And, And I think we can become... I said this yesterday, like whiny (laughs) three-year-olds. When we don't get our way, we throw a temper tantrum and we get angry. Job didn't respond in that way. He understood it is God that gave him all of the blessings that he had. It was God's right to take it away. But his response at the very end is the instructive part. And he blessed the name of the Lord. We need to live in our singleness understanding that if God withholds it from us, He deserves to be blessed in that. Mm -hmm. And if the Lord ultimately gifts us to be in marriage, he should be blessed in that. It is his to do with whatever he wants. Your life is his to do with it whatever he wills. Yeah. Well, and one thing you pointed out in the the sermon yesterday um, was like, you know, in Job 1, it it opens and it kind of tells about Job. But then it jumps to heaven. Mm. Like it jumps to, okay, here's Satan shows up. He and God are like having this dialogue. And you pointed out how like we're behind the scenes of all of that. Mm-hmm. We say, okay, here's what's going Here's who Job is. We have this picture. Okay, now scene change, you know, cut to, you know, cut to the new location. And we see the behind the scenes of God saying, okay, how about, and God is the one that recommends Job. He mm-hmm. brings him up and says, okay, what about my servant Job? And so we see the parameters that are set. We see the limits that are put on it. We see all of that. Job didn't have any of mm-hmm. that. It's not like Job's having this vision of, oh, here's what's going on. And it's like, okay, something's about to happen. It makes sense. Yeah. There's at least some level of like, okay, this is really not fun. But I know God's you know, in control. I know his sovereignty is at work. I know where the limits are. He didn't have any of that. Mm-mm. And so we even, even knowing all of that, we, I still marvel at his response. But if you think about it, of him not even knowing any of that. Because um, I know like for me, I've said before, if I could just know. Yep. You know, okay, yeah, you're single now, but in five, five-year plan, let's go with it. In five years, you will be married. Mm-hmm. And it's a little bit like convicting because in my my immediate thought is, well, I'd get a lot more done. I'd be a lot more productive if I knew. And I'm like, okay. So just you're not knowing in no way affects God's sovereignty over the situation. So why aren't you living that way more productive way that if you knew you would be doing now? Let me um, let me get personal. Oh, dear. We're going to get personal here for a second. Okay. Because you're not married. I'm not. 
We Never all, have we been. All, you haven't been either. <laughs> yeah. Um, and where we're currently at, yeah. you wouldn't say in the next few months, I'm going to get married. No. Right? Unless, yeah. Unless something Some drastically changes. Drastic. That, that's no. where we're at. I do not see being and, married and by the end of this year. If you get married yeah. within the next few years, yeah. you might look back mm-hmm. and never understand why you were single for as long as you were. That's... And you have to be okay with that. That's honestly one of the tougher things i might never understand why i have gone through yeah the relationship hardships that i have and i have to be okay with that yeah. here's what makes it easier for me knowing that my god is the one working in all of it mm-hmm. job understood that god was working in all of it he yeah. didn't understand the circumstances and the why behind it he just recognized god's at work good enough for me Mm. And even when we fast forward to the end of the book of Job, when he even starts to consider the why question, you'll yeah. notice <laughs> God doesn't answer that question. Yeah. He doesn't say, Be, I, I allowed this to happen to you. I allowed your family to die except for your wife. And then I allowed your health to decline. And then I allowed your friends to be really obnoxious and completely <laughs> wrong for yeah. this purpose. It yeah. did X, Y, and Z in your life. And so you were prepared for this. Yep. He never says any of it. Mm-mm. All he says were, where were you when I made you? Yeah, which is some where, of my favorite. Where were you yeah. when I formed everything? Are you the one that has <laughs> all of these storehouses of um, snow, snow and hell and, yeah. wrapped up in silos? That's a, that's quoting um, a ghost ship song. I love it. <laughs> um, the, the one that always fascinates me. And yeah. I know it fascinates you as well because you love the beach as yes. much as I. Actually, you love the beach more than I, I do. I do more than you do, <laughs> yeah. The, the statement of God Ooh. marks the yeah. reach of the tide and it never goes past the line that he draws in the sand and it never falls yeah. short of the line that he draws in the sand. Yeah. It's just incredible yeah. and mind-boggling for me because there are innumerable number of waves that hit the beaches all over the yeah. world and he's marking the line for every, every single, single one, one of those. Well, and you sit there and you, you just... <laughs> I, yeah, it's fascinating to me, but you can sit on the beach and watch. And if you watch, you kind of get a feel for the waves. Like, mm-hmm. how, okay, okay, this one's going to do this. And like, you can get a feel for it. But even still, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, where did that come from? You know, it's mm-hmm. up under my chair. And it's like, where did this come from? I had, like, I'm totally off, caught by surprise. Uh, yeah, and I'm sitting here watching one wave. Just just this one. And I can't even keep up with that. Um God never mm. answers yeah. Job's why. Yeah. He doesn't. Well, and, you know, thinking about Job, he, not that there wasn't any purpose for Job, but he didn't answer why. And the, But here we are, however many thousands of years later, taking so much from that. Mm-hmm. And so the same thing with this, of like, in our context of like, okay, why are you single longer than you wanted to be? You're different than, you know, you thought you were going to marry this guy and it didn't work out and I don't understand why. Um it may not be for you to know because the purpose may not be for your lifetime. Job had no understanding of why God had done or yeah. allowed what had happened. Job had no understanding that one day some idiot on a Sunday morning would be standing <laughs> in a pulpit pleading with his people to understand the significance of how he worshiped God mm-hmm. in the midst of such sorrow and relating it to their Savior. Yeah. So he didn't see that. And yet the hand of God is at work in all of that yeah. to even for this very, very tiny scenario to use it for his glory. Mm-hmm. So all of that to say, you may never know why you have been single for as long as you have. I will never know why I've gone through what I have to the extent in which I fully understand and say, makes sense to me Yeah, because God owes me no answer. Job even recognizes I have looked into things that I do not understand, things that are far too wonderful for me. He says, I had no right to ask. And yet it's the Lord that Mm -hmm. graciously answers him. Job had no right to even asking the question and getting the answer. It was the grace of God that answered the question in the first place. Yeah. We may never know. And that is okay. And and honestly, in any situation, if, if the only purpose i mean and i think rarely is this the only like there's one tiny little purpose for this type like i don't think that i think there's way more far-reaching than we realize but even if the only 
purpose for whatever struggle or tr- whether it's singleness or something else, whatever struggle or trial or thing you're dealing with, even if the only purpose was that after it, you would trust God a little bit more. Hmm. Even if that was the only thing God wants us to say, not my will, but thine. Mm -hmm. And yes, that is worth it because that's what I want more than anything. And that's what I think as single people, especially in the church, we struggle with, well, people who aren't in the church don't struggle with this at all, but you struggle with wanting to please God more. Mm -hmm. It's a hard and... You know, you don't want to admit that, but I think we all wrestle with, do I want to please God? Do I want to become more like Christ? Do I want to be more sanctified? Do I want to trust him more? Do I want those things more than I want this job, this marriage, this car, whatever the thing that you really want is not having it may just be for you to have to come to grips with answering that question of, do I want to please God more? I, I had referenced, um, I think it was Second Corinthians. I referenced Second Corinthians twice yesterday. But the first yeah. reference where Paul is talking about the, the calamity that they have gone through in Asia and all of the struggles that they had, and he said it was for the purpose of allowing us to depend upon God. Mm-hmm. Maybe in your singleness, God is forcing you to depend on him. Yep. And realize you really don't have any control over your relationship status. Yeah. Yes, there is the faithful obedience, but as A.W. Pink says, do what God hath commanded and let God do what he will. Yeah. He's going to do whatever he wants. Not because he is this mean puppeteer, but because he is a good and glorious and kind and loving and gracious God that Mm -hmm. understands what you need the most really is him. Yep. Well, and you talked about this yesterday too. Um, And I honestly, I was sitting back there and I just kept waiting. I'm like, surely he's going to go to Isaiah 55. Um, cause those are eight, eight, nine, I guess eight through 11 are some of my absolute favorite. Did I not go to Isaiah? You did. No, no, no. I'm oh, okay. sorry. You did. I, I was just, about to say that was one no, of my no, cross no, references. You, no, no, you did. It was later in the sermon. Mm. I just, I was like, cause I was like, surely like that was, that's what kept going in my head. And that's one of my absolute favorite verses where it talks about, um, that God's thoughts are mm. not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. And they're as high as the heavens are from the earth is how, Big that expanse between his thoughts and ours are. God, we we think God is sitting up there being this vindictive person who is withholding this thing because, ha ha, I'll show them because they sinned and they da 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 da. When all that is, is it imposing what we would do on God? Mm-hmm. Like, that's all that is. Uh, and I don't mean all that is as in like trivializing it, but that's what that is. is I would do that. I would say, Psh, you didn't do what I wanted, I'll show you. Mm-hmm. That's not how God works. Um, but we're so confined by our thoughts and the way our brains work and by our sin nature that we can't even realize that. But that's, we only see it through that one little, you know, you had your blinders on earlier. We only see it through that Mm. one little view when in reality we have no concept of all that is at work at every point in our lives. My favorite part of that passage is probably verse 11 Mm -hmm. because it's right after he's been talking about the snow and the rain falling down and uh, accomplishing its purposes the very end of it, he talks about his word will always accomplish its purpose. Yeah. That's something that you can, you can plant some (laughs) roots in and just cling to Mm -hmm. that. God's word will always accomplish its purpose. And that is a glorious reality. So if the Lord is working in you through singleness to sanctify you, it will accomplish its purpose, but it's going to be a whole lot better if you just get on board with it. (laughs) Yes. Cause it's going to be what it is regardless Mm -hmm. Uh, no need to make it more difficult. But it, it's better when you're not going kicking and screaming. <laughs> exactly. But sometimes I find myself going kicking and screaming. For That's sure. just a personal thing. But <laughs> oh yeah, all I think of we all do. that to say, if you will get out of your own way for a second and yeah. realize you're not owed anything and God is still good in yeah. all things, then you can start to look at your singleness and go, hmm. Yep. I need to get to work. Yeah. I need to stop living for this thing that I'm not guaranteed. Mm-hmm. I need to stop holding on to this is what I'm owed and deserved and just start living for who I was created for. Yep. And if God graciously gives it to you, praise him, praise him. If and he if he doesn't praise him, all the same. praise him. Yep. And Job praise God even more Yeah. in the trial. Yeah. That's instructive. Mm-hmm. 
But coming out of that, because we've been talking a lot more of the theology behind yeah. it and the why behind <laughs> it, practically speaking, I was about to say, so practically. the question is, how do you not waste your singleness? I have a few thoughts. Most of them yep. are related to the church and other people. Do you have a few I, things as yes, well? Yes, I and mine were probably going to be in the same vein of, yeah, go ahead. You start. Well, I think for <laughs> me is spiritually, yeah. don't waste your singleness mm-hmm. in terms of thinking. And we, we've talked about this before, and we'll probably get on to this later on in yeah. the season of the idea and the concept that spiritually you'll be better when you get married. <laughs> yeah. It's laughable. <laughs> But, but that's so that's true. the thought process yeah. that's always out there yeah. that people will tie it to their sin struggles or will tie it to um, their personal spiritual disciplines yeah. of it'll all be better when I get married we and I have trying to earn it someone I'm else <laughs> to help encourage me and build me up. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> your sin is going to be far more obvious when you get married because you're adding another sinner to the equation. Do you ever have people people say stuff like that? Um, or you hear, you hear married people say that, or you, you know, whatever it is. And you think, well, maybe not like it'll, it'll be fine. Like, you know, I know I'm just saying, I find myself going, well, maybe maybe they don't really know. Bad. (laughs) I know. I'm not saying it's good. You need to (laughs) in your singleness now, whether you want to be single the rest of your life or you feel like the Lord has called you to marriage. You need to prioritize your spiritual life. And I'm preaching to the choir here because mm-hmm. sometimes I'm, I go a day or two and I'm like, have I even prayed? <laughs> what is wrong with me? Yeah. I just hear R.C. Sproul yeah. screaming in the background. What is wrong with you people? It's just yelling at me. What is wrong with you? Because that I, I'll do that. Yeah. And I'll get so busy and focused on other things that I get yeah. distracted and I don't prioritize my spiritual need. That's got to be the first thing that you do of not wasting your singleness is get to work in the word and in prayer. Yes, because it will, you're not going to have more time for that once you add more people Mm -mm. to the mix. I mean, once you're married, but especially once you have kids, like you have to have one already hidden the word in your heart so that in those moments of frustration and whatever you're calling to mind or the Holy Spirit is bringing to mind the verses you already know. He can't recall to your mind things you've never read, things you don't know. So you need to be doing that now. But then too, if you have established patterns and habits in your life, adding other things into that isn't going to derail it. You can't like, but trying to start a new habit and change all of that, it's going to be really difficult. Um, so yes, I would say that is definitely the first thing I would then from there, I think we get, or at least I get, I won't presume upon everyone, but I have a feeling most people are this way too. We don't like it when people in the church or married people talk about, well, you're single. So you've got all the time. You've got all the time to do whatever you can serve in this way. We're going to volunteer you for that. You can do all the things because you're the single one. Mm -hmm. It irks me a little because I'm like, my time is important too, which is valid to an extent, but there's a lot of pride in that. Oh yeah. And, and so I think we don't like it when people presume that upon us, but I would say maybe you should be doing enough that there's not room for them to presume upon you. Take that time proactively look for ways to be involved. And I know it can be a touchy thing. I'm like, well, everyone's married and they don't have anything for single people and whatever. Okay, fine. If your idea of church is going to the thing that I can get what I want out of it, you've missed the point. Mm -hmm. Church should not be a consumeristic exercise. It's how can I pour into the church? And I think even more, if you feel on the fringe or on a margin or like there's nothing for you here, find someone else who's also left out on the fringe, marginalized, whatever. But like, are there single moms in your church? Are there widows in your church? People who maybe they're not, you know, because I hear like, oh, there's no other single people. They don't have to be. You are allowed to talk to people at your church who aren't single. And I say that kind of tongue in cheek, but I think we get in a groove. And so I have some really great friendships here with some of the older women who maybe are widowed. I have great friendships with some of the single moms here because I said, you know what? I'm going to reach out. I'm going to go. I'm going to do. I'm not going to wait for them to come to me. One of your closest friends is married, (laughs) 
has multiple children. Yeah. One of her children is now married. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, and I mean, that's... Yeah. That's great. That's what it yes. should be. So I don't think you have to wait for the perfect opportunity to pop up that fits all of the criteria that you were hoping for before you can be involved. Get out there. Jump in. Every, if, I feel like everyone sits around and waits for other people to come to them mm-hmm. and say, I want to, how can I help you? What can I do for you? And then they complain about not being able to get plugged in. And I'm just talking in general, not just single people. And my answer to that is, you know what? People should be loving. They should be reaching out. They should be trying to make you feel welcome. I'm not excusing that. However, what have you done about the situation? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, a long time ago I said, you know, I'm not going to get my feelings hurt if I'm always the one reaching out. Because you, know, you reach out, reach out, reach out, and maybe the other person isn't saying, hey, let's go do something. And then you start thinking, well, I'm not going to I'm not gonna keep doing this. They're not putting in an equal amount of effort. I put it, I put it in ministry <laughs> context right now, thinking about that, because I've, I've had so many people yeah. while I've been in ministry that have come up to me and gone, we just don't feel connected to the church. Mm-hmm. We don't feel well connected to the community. Nobody really comes up and talks to us. And I really want to look at them and say, but that's because you walk in right as the service starts and you walk out as soon as the service exactly. is over. Exactly. So, of course, you're, you're not right. connected. No one's chasing you down in the parking lot. You are correct. And so I just said, you know what? If I want to do something, if I want to be involved with something, I'm going to ask. I'm going to go. I'm going to do. And I'm not going to worry about, oh, did they ask me? Or, do, well, you know, did, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to say anything else to them until they ask me to do something because whatever. And honestly, it's made all the difference passive, for me. Passive faith is a myth. Yeah. That's not a real thing. Mm-hmm. If you're passive in your faith and walk with the Lord and pursuit of other people, <laughs> you're you're doomed yeah. from the start. Yeah. There's no such thing as passivity. I mean, you have to put yourself out yeah. there. Like we said with dating and relationships, uh-huh. it's the same thing with singleness. You got to get plugged in. Yep. That does again. It doesn't excuse the people in the church that say rude things and they really didn't mean anything yeah. by it, but they say it because they don't think about it. That doesn't excuse that. You still have to get plugged in. I think right. about me being really young in ministry, first Timothy four twelve. Mm-hmm. Do not let anyone despise you for your youth, but set an example. Yeah. So it's my job to not give anyone ground for despising me because I'm young. Yep. Still working on it, <laughs> but it's my job. Yeah. And it is my job as a single person to not give anyone footholds to look down on me because I'm not in a relationship. Yep. Bottom line. Yep. It puts the responsibility on my shoulders and it tells me you got some work to do there, bud. <laughs> Yeah. And you better get started you better because get you can't just in. sit there and wait. Yep. So I, I think that's kind of really related to getting plugged in. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I again, I think of the words of Paul of don't waste your life. Don't waste your singleness. Put yourself out there everywhere. Yeah. Serve as hard as you can. One of the things that me and a, a buddy of mine talked about years ago is we were worried about going into ministry as single guys. Mm-hmm. Now, what's funny is God withheld him um, from getting into from, the ministry oh, until okay. after he was married and had some <laughs> kids, which is interesting because then God just kind of plunged me into right. it as a single guy. So it's two different arcs for him. But you can see, yeah. For him, and, and he'll say this, marriage and having kids has softened him and sharpened mm. him uh, because he, he is a, a very blunt, in-your-face <laughs> kind of guy. Yeah. And a lot of times that doesn't work in marriage. Really? Yeah, it's strange how that works. So Funny. it's it's humbled him <laughs> yeah. and brought him to a place where he's way better off ministering. For me, it's been good because it's forced me to go, okay, well, I've got all this free time and I can either sit here and pout mm-hmm. or I'm, I'm going to have to go and do something. <laughs> yeah. And there have been seasons where I sat there and pouted yeah. sinfully, but it forced me to get out there. So it's yeah. two different trajectories there. Well, and you can also see how, like... We tend to only see the good parts of the the thing we don't have. Mm-hmm. Um, but seeing the parallel, like you probably both see the benefits, but also the drawbacks to both of those. Yes. And that nothing is perfect. We just have this grass is greener mentality that is a complete farce. It's not true. Mm-hmm. Well, so. my buddy is, he's a brand new youth pastor. Okay. Just started January 1st. That was his first Oh, so we're talking like a few weeks. Oh, a few weeks. Oh, wow. And he's already talking about, he's like, man, it's been great, but there's been some challenges. He "Mm -hmm." said, you know, with with my family (laughs) trying to transition a young family into it. When I came here, I loaded up a small U-Haul and I took off. 
<laughs> yeah. And that was it. I packed just, up and I was gone. Yeah. And I was in a completely new context and I didn't have to worry about uprooting my kids out of yeah. the school system or out of wherever yeah. they were and missing their friends and my wife. Having, yeah. I just went. Yeah. I mean, like you, you talk about getting plugged in and getting to know people and all of that. You just did that. You didn't have to worry about, okay, so now is my wife, like, is she meeting people? Is mm-hmm. she meeting people? Are the kids fitting in? Do they have enough to do? Like, that's a lot. I got the greatest, one of the greatest compliments I've ever <laughs> received the other day. One of my students said, I don't really remember oh, yeah. when you got here. <laughs> It's just like you've been here for forever. I don't want to cry in that moment. (laughs) That's so kind of you to say. But that's when you just throw yourself into ministry and serving other people. That's what happens naturally. I feel like that's kind of a general consensus of the people that know me. My friends in college (laughs) used to say, uh, you weren't and then you were were. and you don't remember when. (laughs) Uh, You just kind of got there. Thank you. (laughs) And and that's, I'm a people person, so that's kind of how I want it to be. But we just got to stop sitting here saying, well, when? Yeah, because then it'll be, well, What if when never comes? Well, that, but also then once you're married, it'll be, okay, well, once, once we've been married for a year and we, you know, we're in a group, we have it figured out and then we'll get plugged in, then we'll get involved. And then it's like, okay, well now we're going to have a a kid. So like once, once, you know, they're older, it's, there's always something. Same thing as when, you know, you talk about, well, if I just got married, then I'd be satisfied. And then there's always something else. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, because you're looking to the wrong place for that. And so it's the same thing of, okay, well, once this happens, then I'll be obedient. Once this happens, then I'll do what God has commanded. Like, if you're wanting to push off being obedient, you're always going to find an excuse. And I say you because I'm talking to you, but trust me, I'm really talking to me too. Like, I get it. And so it's kind of the same concept. You'll always find a reason to not do what you should if that's what you're really looking for. And there's extremes in what we're talking about. I mean, Absolutely. You, you can take it and run to the extreme of where I'm just going to sit and wait. And that that's not a thing either. <laughs> Um, so like there's, there's the get out there and go, go do what you're supposed to be doing, mm-hmm. but it's also not a, and then poof, God will bring this <laughs> no, person into your life it's not and it's not the opposite yeah. <laughs> either. You know, it's somewhere wait, wait, in the wait, middle. It? <laughs> it's building to that moment right there. It really is oh, though. Yeah, it really it is, is though. So <laughs> sometimes we just have to get out of our own way. Yeah. It's basically all I'm yep. saying. On, on a different, just more practical, okay. very, very practical personal level. You're really good at this, and I'm sometimes not as good at this, of go do what you love to do. I mean, you love to go to the movies. I hate going to the movies. Yeah. You love going to the movies, so yeah. you do it. Yeah. By myself. By Here yourself. Yep. But, I mean, I love to be outdoors. Yeah. And I have um, some people that love to be outdoors with me, and sometimes I'm like, no, I'm just going to go me. Yeah. And that's cool. People laugh. I'm like, did you, did you go fishing the other day? Yeah. Who'd, <laughs> Who'd you go, you go with? with? <laughs> My fishing pole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no one went with you? Yeah. No. <laughs> Did somebody have to go with me? I didn't see that on my fishing license. It, I, was, <laughs> I had to have a chaperone. Is this like a driver, a learner's permit? I have to have somebody with me? Well, and you know, that kind of made me think of something. We've <laughs> we've harped on for 58 minutes now. Um, the single people and not wasting your time and get after it and do the hard things and all of that. But I would put out there, and you can tell me if you agree agree or not put it out there there's an element to not wasting your singleness that is what you just said there is nothing wrong with saying this is where the lord has me i'm being obedient i'm living my life and i'm going to live my life i like going to the movies i'm gonna go to a movie and if i go on a thursday night randomly because i can and it's just me great go have fun go live your life do the things that God made you to enjoy doing Mm -hmm. and be okay doing them by yourself. That honestly has been a huge turning point for me of realizing it's not just doing the hard things that you don't want to do, but you're single and you should do them anyway. It's almost giving yourself the freedom to enjoy the perks of being single. Married people enjoy the perks of being married. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that in the proper context. See, and, and you like doing the movies thing. But you don't like going and sitting in a coffee shop because you're not a coffee person. I could go sit in yes. a coffee shop by myself for you hours could. with a podcast. You do. I do. With a podcast in one ear and yep. a book in my hands, and I am perfectly content for hours yeah. on end. It's fantastic. Yep. So just go do what you love yeah. to do. It doesn't mean that you have to hold back in life and sit. 
at home yeah. on top of your hands no. going, well, I'll go do something when I have someone to do it with. Stop no. that nonsense. Well, yeah, I mean, like, bad. Back in the fall, I, it was, I'm off on Fridays and I had a day, I was like, you know, I want to go see some leaves. And so I just kind of got in the car and drove a little. And before I knew it, I was, I mean, I stopped to take pictures here, take pictures there, whatever. But I think I was almost two hours away. I, my mom called me or someone's like, hey, where are you? What are you doing? I was like, well, about that. <laughs> I'm halfway to Tennessee or I don't even know where I ended up necessarily. But go do the things. Enjoy, you know, the, the day that God has given you. Oh, I'm already decided and that this next fall, like yeah. every other weekend, I'm going to be gone hunting. hunting. <laughs> I'm gonna be gone in the woods. Yeah, I haven't. I have not had a good hunting season, and it's pretty much over yeah. at this point. And nothing to show for it. A lot of work and a lot of money went into it, but nothing to show for it. <laughs> you got the one deer. It wasn't mine. It wasn't. No, that was Nick's. No, no, no. Before that, that was a year ago. Nuh uh. Yes. Really? Yes. That was last hunting season. Oh, that's weird. Uh-huh. My mind is bl- like. I thought that was literally like no. just a little bit before that. Hunting season oh, weird. started, uh, yeah, that was November of uh, 21 when I shot that deer. Oh, that's weird. Uh-huh. I thought that was just this past fall. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. So I will be I will be in the woods almost every other <laughs> yeah. weekend because that's something that I yeah. love and I enjoy. And yeah. yeah, it's been hard and it sanctified me because there's been some moments that I really <laughs> wanted to scream and I was like okay you have to realize that, that the Lord's allowing you to, to do this and allowing you to enjoy nature and stop complaining yeah you big butt do you, do you ever find yourself this may be a weird girl overthinking thing that if you enjoy being single too much that God's gonna say oh well never mind on that whole marriage thing you're having a really good time so just don't worry about it I don't Are you think, ever tempted to that? I don't think that God will ever say never mind, so. I know. I didn't just, say it's theologically correct. Personally. I just meant. <laughs> no. Are you, yeah, that's something that I've like, I know. No, uh, for me, because I tell you I'm overly analytical, yeah. my my overanalyzing things <laughs> is uh, the opposite of Job, where Job says that <laughs> basically he doesn't understand, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's trying to understand so that I can arrive to the conclusion. Gotcha. And if I arrive to the conclusion, this is why God's allowed me to be single for so long, and, and I can you're just good with it. and I can just get to that point yeah. and saying He's been trying to sanctify me in this area. Well, then I can be like, all right, well, I'm going to get really, really quickly <laughs> sanctified in this area, and then <laughs> yeah. poof, there's a spouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't worked yet, huh? No, no. Okay, got that, it. That's where I'm at. Okay. So I have to smack my hand and say, yeah. stop it. Yeah, stop it. Just walk in faith. So, yeah, I'm analytical in that area. Other... We're, we're opposite again, ends we're of the spectrum. opposite on that one. It's crazy how that works. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, okay. I think I that gonna... we answered the question. What was the question? Um, why you shouldn't waste your oh, oh, singleness. Oh, oh. Or how to not waste your singleness. Got it. It can also be a statement as well, it's, if you so desire. I wasn't trying to be difficult. I just was afraid I had You're just trying missed. to be obtuse. I'm not. I really thought I had missed. Like I was like, where did we ask a question in obtuse here? Obtuse is word of it. the day. Okay. Phrase obtuse. of the day was load of crap. <laughs> oh, my word. On that note, everyone, thank you for being here. We are so glad to be back for another season to kick off season 10 of Looking for the Middle we have a lot in store for you guys. We have a lot of, a lot set more. We have more interviews lined up than we have in previous seasons. Yes, we do. We're looking and forward to those. One of them, I am so stinging excited for. I am too. So, I mean, I'm excited for the other one as well. But I know, I know she, yes, this one person very well, I know and who, I have yeah. such a high <laughs> position. Yes, they have a very high standing in my life. I'm it's, excited. It's going to be really good. So thank you for being here. We have a lot of really interesting topics. Yeah. Do you I want mean, to tease a couple of them? There's some You're looking that, at the list. I'm, I am looking at the list. One of them, because uh-huh. I think everyone really liked when we got super personal. <laughs> yes. One of them is titled Letters to a Younger Me. Yep. That one is going to be, be good. hard and yet really good mm-hmm. because we can, again, um, get get pretty personal. Yeah. And I, it seems like you guys enjoy that one. Um <laughs> I mean, there's some really heavy ones as well, yeah. like defining biblical manhood and womanhood, yeah, and can... as you approach dating <laughs> and theological non-negotiable. I mean, there's some. We got some. I think we have a good balance of fun, yeah, and like heavy. I'm actually really excited for because this is a really big soapbox <laughs> I get on. 
why missionary da- dating is so bad. Yeah, Dalton was like, I, can't I have an wait. idea. <laughs> okay. So we've got some good stuff yes. coming. Come back. We will be back, I guess, on Friday with our first couch, first couch cast, I can't talk, of the season. So come back for that, and then we'll be back next Wednesday. But until then, I'm Bethany. And I'm Dalton. And this is Looking for the Middle. Looking for the Middle.